recording. Great. Welcome to the OSRS podcast. I am Mitt Madcow. What's going on, boys? Rex, as always. And hello, it's me, Rexco. And today we have the pleasure of having, well, first, the Dead Memo champion turned JMod. How you doing, mate? I'm great. Thank you for asking. Um, currently just AFK and some shooting stars and about to have a wonderful chat. That's why I reendorse AFK skilling. <laughs> <laughs> it's all like we were saying, all the PKers love shooting stars. And then really? I don't know who hates them. I, I still don't understand that part of the hate. I get it in a way, but it's like like oh. determined hate. Like they really hate shooting stars like some of these people. They love it's the crazy. game. You know, the, the sweaty boys love their tick. Picking and dunk, you know, dumping, whatever. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, mate, how is uh, how's Jagex lately? How's how's working there? That's good. Um, so I started for those who don't know, um, in January uh, of this year. So I've been there now for ten months, uh, and it's been really good. Um, went from being a full time content creator from I think I want to say twenty seventeen until about twenty twenty one maybe 2022 and then stopped for a year and then applied to Jarex and yeah, I'm there now. Um, so yeah, no, it's been great. Uh, transition was really nice. Um, very different lifestyle, obviously working in a nine to five now, but I'm enjoying it a lot. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to break that down a bit too. Cause I feel like the majority of us RuneScape lovers would, would want to know what the daily life of a J mod is. Uh, first off, who do you hang out with at the office? So I don't actually go to the office much. I mean, I do sometimes here and there, but um, it's mainly working from home. Um, but uh, for a day in the life, for, for me, so I'm a game designer, I'm a junior game designer. Um, and that essentially means uh, for a pro we'll get given like a project that we're working on and we design what we think would work well for it. Nearly leaked what I was working on, but no. <laughs> um, <laughs> So we'll, we'll basically come up with a des design, then we'll go through the community consultation. So we'll say to you guys, do you like this? What, you know, you, you know the process. Um, and then we edit what we've got. And then if it passes a poll, we work on it. And then that can be, it depends how big the project is. That can be a, a, a month, it can be a few months. It's normally a couple of months, if not more. Um, and yeah, that that's pretty much it. That's like the the, the cycle. So. The project, maybe I shouldn't talk about that, but um, yeah, it's good. You design for, for like a month with all of the iterations from the community, mm -hmm. like going over it, making sure everything is good. Um, and then you're like coding for like a couple of months and uh, yeah. And then you release it and you get to see what players think about it. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my first project was uh, the <clears throat> Easter project. Um, so that was really fun seeing players actually playing um, stuff that I'd actually coded. It was it was hilarious to me because I wanted to make sure that it was like easy to follow. But then obviously some people got stuck because they didn't have their quest helper plugin. But then you had <laughs> other people saying, "Bro, just read it, read what the <laughs> NPCs are saying," and then everyone was helping each other. It was amazing. It was it was a really good time. TikTok generation. Yeah, we don't want to pry too much to get you in trouble. Um, just to break down the podcast for those tuning in, uh, we're going to ask him about his JMod duties and just how he's enjoying his life. And I think Racy's going to get into coding. And then I want to touch in on dead man mode. And if we have time, maybe we talk about League, which is coming up. Just uh, give people a rundown because uh, I know I enjoy a rundown when coming in. Yeah. So ha here's a question for you Has becoming a JMod, which was obviously previous when you were a content creator this was what you really wanted to do i mean you went away for a year i i believe you learned how to code from scratch more or less like from the basics didn't know anything about it has the job of working for jagex on the game has it lived up to your expectations banks um yeah uh it's been an amazing experience like you know when you're a streamer or YouTuber and you, you wake up every day thinking, I absolutely love what I do, um, and it's a blessing to do what you do. I feel the exact same way about being a dev or a game designer for Jagex. It, it's, awesome. it is truly a dream come true. Um, it's a lot more secure or, than what, what content creation was for me. Content creation was always like a 
it was always a mind battle whether uh, how something was going and you know you kind of you never stop when you're when you're a content creator yeah. whereas now like i know what i need to do and in my spare time i'm technically working without actually doing anything because i'm just you know i'm integrated in the community so i get feedback all the time and i, I can naturally uh, bring that to the office and then whatever i'm working on it's already kind of there i don't need to talk to our community managers and say what does the community think about it it's, I'm, I'm experiencing it myself because i'm playing it so it is yeah. i think it's it's really good so that can really nicely lead into another question which is you know as content creators i feel like for me personally i always get a sense of like accomplishment whenever i upload a video that's a very simple way of feeling good about what i do because it's like okay i've worked on this i've edited it it's out there now people can enjoy it so being a jmod now doing coding working on projects and such where would you say that you get like your day-to-day -day, i don't know if i would say like motivation but like you know the gratification of knowing that you're doing a good job if it takes say a couple weeks or months to work on something and it won't be released for that time like where do you find like your day-to-day -day gratification um i mean for me because i love the game so much it's every project that i'm working on because i'm hoping and expecting it will be positive for the community that's kind of the satis sat satisfaction from it because if i'm working on something i think the community are going to love this and i'm going to love this then you know it, it's just it's so yeah it's motivating you, you just you know people are going to enjoy it you enjoy working on it because it's the game you love and yeah it's kind of like a loop so it's just continuous motivation um, yeah. which is lovely oh dude that oh. must be kind of torturous only being able to talk to other j mods about stuff like because you you obviously yeah. have friends that are in the runescape community like I, I picture like Robert is the first guy that comes to mind and like I bet there's stuff that you want to speak about that you're just not able to and it's like killing you inside. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I get messages well, not all the time from Robert Robert, but I've had a few messages here and there, but he, he gets the same answer every time. I, I can't speak <laughs> about it, so yeah. <laughs> Oh, I have a question about since you're talking about, you know, working on your projects, like in the ten months that you've officially, you know, worked for Jagex, like how how many I guess, you know, projects have you worked on and can you share the ones that you know that's already been like way uh, out in the game already and there's not no secrets but what have you what are some that you've done you already said you did easter but what are what about some like non-holiday events you know updates wise yeah so i did training um when i joined then i did the easter event and then shortly after that i had dead man um, and then obviously since Dead Man, I've been working on another project that I can't talk about. But yeah, so Dead Man was kind of my first non-holiday um, um, piece of content. So obviously it's a bit different because it's not like permanent to the game or anything, but it let me um, use information that I'd collected in the past of what I'd like to see in a Dead Man and bring that forward and, and see if the community wanted it. So yeah, that, that was my first proper project. Now, uh, that's a pretty big, like, update, right? That, that they let you just handle. It, was it because, obviously, you had a lot of PvP experience? So when they literally got you into um, working for that project, they just assumed that, like, you're going to, they're going to trust your feedback and let you do a lot of the stuff on your own, like, uh, in terms of what specific mechanics are going to the, uh, uh, the demo mode this season. Yeah, um... So I'm, I luckily work with some very talented people who are very uh, tech um, savvy. Um, so I was kind of bringing the knowledge, they were bringing the tech, and then we we're kind of working together to make like a good product, basically. Um, but internally, so I, I, I can pitch some ideas, and then in, it has to all be approved internally as well. So it's not just, oh, we'll just trust whatever Manx says. It's, it is discussed internally. We, we say whether it'll be a good idea, what could we change, and then we'll pitch it to the community. And that's kind of how it goes. So it's not solely on me. Like, there's other people that would have pitched ideas and, and that would have contributed to it as well. We, uh, we were trying to get you on before Dead Man Mode, just because not as a JMod, but as a, the winner of a Dead Man Mode, there's like a handful, right, of those people. We wanted to get your uh, advice, but we couldn't get you on because you had all these secrets that we could not untap into. So are Chambers there anything you could share that like can you make it open to what you were working on in dead mode what were your what your part was in that experience um so i mean i want to say all of it 
But oh, so basically, I had a part in all of it. It wasn't all just me. Um, okay. I I had I I did the majority of the design for it um, because basically, with with a project, you kind of get told like your limitations and stuff. So you have to work within that your restraints. So you have to work within that. You you can't go too crazy, right? You have a deadline. You need to make sure everything is doable. So I, I did the design for it, um, discussed it with the team and stuff, and so we can filter out what we think we can and can't do. Um, and then I just worked on on coding it with uh, two other people. Um, so that, yeah, I kind of had a part in all of it. And then obviously feedback, um, once Dead Man was out, I was myself playing it. I was pretty much every day, I was taking half a day off of holiday just to play it. And then the other half, I'd be in the, I'd be online just helping out. Like, okay, what do we need to change? What can we change, and all of that. Um, because it's a competition, we want to try and keep it as um, linear as possible. We don't want to change too much to keep it um, as competitive as possible. Um, but the things that we that I would personally like to have changed, we will have that in the future. You know, uh, oh, I okay. note that stuff down as feedback, and then in the future we can we can adapt can we, it to the next step. Can you talk about it, or you're keeping a yeah. secret? <laughs> um, I mean, it's probably quite quite. Um, obvious knowledge i guess it's just what could we change for uh if that if slash when there is a next dead man you know um oh, so, so it's not that's... confirmed then no, <laughs> I, I can't <laughs> confirm or deny anything here you know? okay um, i got you okay. but, but yeah, i've made a massive um uh it's not a website a, do a document i've got a massive document with changes to breaches changes to, to the finale just loads of changes that would make I'm just sure. the game mode better I'm sure you you probably already heard this, but like nobody wants fog, <laughs> you know. Nobody likes that fog yeah. mechanic at the end. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, we're, so... we're hoping for like monsters spawning to kill everyone, you know, like nonstop or something more thematic. Yeah. Dude, it could be like yeah. um, Attack on Titan, you know, when all the massive titans spawn at the end and just like destroy. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> yes. That would be Honestly, uh -huh. just a wall of like... sucks just like coming in, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's no shield. You're just like. Yeah. Taking the hit. I, yeah, I think this was one of the best Deadman modes we've ever had, especially with the breaches. But I do think that the finale, people were expecting the breaches to be wild, like the Attack on Titan, like uh, yeah. just everywhere, nonstop spawn. You got to survive. Yeah, I can comment on it. Um, yes. So, a as a player in the past, when there's been stuff that's out of your control that you die to it feels really frustrating because obviously you play for like three, some people might play for the three weeks just for the finale. Not many people probably did because we'd really changed the prize pool this time around. But if you did, and then you got to the finale and then you had like three Jads, five uh, Kriaras <laughs> all attacking you and you just insta die as a player, that would feel so bad. So this time around, that's why it was like a bit dulled down. And I wanted to make sure like the PVP was the main um, aspect of the finale. Um, the, the really the the biggest shame of the finale was we obviously had five worlds right. Uh, we were showing two of the worlds on stream, uh, oh. and the the one the world that I was spectating, which was not shown on stream because we we couldn't. Um, sorry, I'm just clicking on my shooting stars. The the <laughs> one world we couldn't uh, we weren't able to show on stream. Uh, that was the rot versus like a, a 500 people uh, fight. So that was absolutely crazy, but obviously no one could see it. And it was so sad because I was sat there watching this crazy fight. And then I can see chats like, what's going on? Where, where, where are the monsters? <laughs> oh. And it was, it was so sad, but knowing it for next time, uh, we'll, we need to make sure that we can show all worlds just in case, you know, all clans go to one specific world to fight each other. And we need to make it a little bit more crazy as well, because definitely... Yeah, I wanted it to be safe for the people participating, so they know they wouldn't die instantly. But it was clear from a, a viewer's perspective, it's probably uh, good to include a bit, a bit more chaos yeah. at least. I mean, so I, demo I think, will confirm again. Wow, well, <laughs> ho hopefully, there's yeah. potential for a Runefest to be coming next year, right? So, I mean, if you want to make it a little crazy, you could do the finale on one of the days at Runefest and like have a stage there for some creators to be able to like pop off. That would be sick. That that that's, that's what like they did it at used the. Like. They did that mm -hmm. at the first ever TwitchCon I went to. Oh man, that's where the one where Wooks won by unnoting lobsters. Oh, that was crazy. In, 
uh, I don't know what the Taverly or whatever that town's called. The but Remington yeah, store. Remington, sorry. And we were just watching and there's like, oh, someone else is alive and it pans over to Luke's <laughs> and he's just chugging lobsters, <laughs> unnoting them as fast as he can. And the best part was we halfway through to rewind it a little bit, we saw him running from this guy and he got like red bars. So he almost died in like a chef's outfit in Barack. I remember that, yeah. That. yeah. yeah. He had like an apron and shit. He was just wearing literally like cooking gear. And then he was just <laughs> out eating the fog. It's so he funny. had like noted lobsters, noted oh, yeah. swordfish. Yeah, I remember specifically it was like 20 minutes before that happened. You just see him almost dying. And then everyone's like, okay, we just assume he's dead. Right. And then like you you focus on like the, the two fighters, like the two last people. But then they're like, wait, hold on. There's a third person. What's this? And then they go over to the store like, eating, what is going he, on? That's He's amazing. eating lobsters. I'm like, oh, he, didn't God, he end looks... up getting DQ'd and then Mod Ash paid him any yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. That was oh, crazy. I was, I was about like, to say, God. we got to shout out Ash for, for that because uh, that was incredibly really. generous, honestly. That was so God. awesome. So yeah. I, I've got to say regarding this Deadman mode, I, I too agree. I think it was the best Deadman mode I've played, to be quite honest, like out of all of them. But I didn't do any, I did a tiny bit of PvP, like a very small amount. Like I would say 90% of my content was just PVM. But even that was like incredibly fun. Was that something that you guys were even thinking about? Because you said that it was like PvP stuff you were focused on, but you know, were yourself, were you included in the thought of like, how's this experience going to be for PVMers? Or, or like, how did that all get cooked up? In terms of the design, I think PvP content suffered. Unless it's something that's like Bounty Hunter, where you're specifically trying to like match PV like players against each other to fight, you kind of need people to to feed on for the PvPers. So <clears throat> by making it more focused for a general player to be able to play and make it fun for like PVMers to play, for example, and skillers to play, you kind of naturally grow the player base, which then gives PvPers people to go target, which then gives other PVPers people to go hunt. So it kind of just works like a nice loop. Um, so yeah, it, it was intentional uh, and I'm glad you enjoyed it because that was like a, yeah. a, a key point. Yeah. Yeah, as a viewer, I, I liked watching people do like the breaches. Pretty fun to watch. It was just, I, I feel like there was a very good balance that was struck this time around where it was like, it was still punishing, but it was not punishing to the point where you couldn't come back from a death. And I think that is probably one of the things that was the most enjoyable for me. Because, you know, something I've always had a problem with with Deadman mode is like, you always get people that just get mega fed and like, you know, they swap bills in and they just, they've got VLS's ancestral in like a couple days and then they just kill it for everyone else. Like that is the nature of the game. But this time around, even with that still taking place, there was so much wiggle room to be able to like rebuild and rebuild fast. I mean, like some of the uh, the relics, what, it, what no sigils, the sigils, some of the sigils that came in, like you could tell that they were specifically with the PVM or in mind. So like what was the one? It was titanium. That thing was amazing. Like, and it just made PVM in so much fun. It wasn't just like, I, I've never played a Deadman mode where I don't didn't do any PVP. Usually all I do is PVP. This time around, all I did was PVM, and I had the best time. Like, it was fantastic. Awesome. <laughs> Good feedback. But, um, Good feedback. yes. <laughs> it, so, you were saying that you had a list. Would you be down to share that list of just some of the lists of what you would want to see more of in Deadman Mode and what you want not to be in Deadman Mode for the future? Yeah. Um... I'll, I'll start off with safe stuff because obviously there's some things that I haven't like properly thought, thought through and then I might say it now and people are like, what? That's a stupid idea. So safe stuff. Um, the finale obviously needs to be a bit more chaotic. Uh, breaches, I've got a an idea to, to change them quite a lot but keep them the same as well. So maybe we have basically alternate days where they... All I'm going to say is they behave a little bit differently in terms of how you hunt the breaches. Um, I think that could be quite good. Um, I think adjusting, obviously, so the point system we had this time around, it was really difficult to balance because it's difficult to uh, see what players are going to do. So rebalancing all of that, um, changing the, the caps for 
um, how many points people can get from specific bosses and stuff like that. Uh, the sigils were, there were some sigils that were obviously very powerful. Um, Sigil of the Ninja was crazy expensive. Ridiculous, yeah. Yeah, so stuff like that, obviously, um, adapt that. That originally was going to be for all weapons that were uh, above two tick. So we actually changed it to above four tick. So imagine if it was above two tick, it would have oh been crazy. God. Like blow pipe would have been one tick or something, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, dude. Mm -hmm. Oh god. Thank god. It, like even so, I still got my ass beat by it, but I'm glad that wasn't the yeah. case. Yeah. Yeah. But no, we will definitely so stuff like that would would need to change. I think I saw a lot of people wanting more defensive sigils. Um because we had a lot of offensive sigils this time. And I I don't know, maybe Sigil of the Ninja kind of just took that overboard and and that's why people wanted defensive sigils. Maybe if we split up that sigil specifically into three sigils. And then you could only use one at a time. That would be kind of more acceptable. Um, but yeah, it's basically, I think we've got a really good um, foundation for, for future dead mans, which is good because then it's, you know, lower dev cost and it's more likely, I would say, to, to uh, happen. Um, if we have to completely change dead man every time, I think it, it's a big ask. So I think having a, a good uh, foundation, I think breaches were a good implementation. It, it encouraged people to play. It gave people a way to rebuild if they died. Uh, it was just it was just different and then fun. And I think if we can keep on building on that, make sure some sigils feel different every time. So the combat feels different. PVM can feel different. I think all of that combined just makes can make a good dead man. And the next dead man, we can just have like a healthier one um, with some sigils just more balanced and just yeah. People can have fun. Dude, yeah, some what? of those sigils, man. When you see the ninja sigil at the price it was at, because I don't know if everyone remembers, like not all the viewers watched that man mode, but pricing wise, that sigil, I think uh, week one was 50 mil with the swap rate being like one to 10, one to 20. We're talking almost a bill for that. Dude, for it, just a power I, up. One of my friends I was playing with got one when he was, uh, I think he was bursting in the monkey tunnels and he sold it for like 15 mil. And then the next day it shot up to like 50. <laughs> he, he was so sad, man. Dude, he was so man. fortunate. But, you know, when I first heard of the breaches, like if you want to think of some ideas outside of the box for how the breaches can work differently, one of the like when it was first announced i was thinking wouldn't it be cool if maybe for the finale or maybe throughout the entire season like it could be almost like imagine like zombies right like zombie waves coming in and it's like they will literally pour into like the grand exchange and if you do not fight them back they will just like destroy the place they'll kill the people there etc like you could do something like that where it's like you you have to defend the area or all of the accounts that are like mewling and stuff that are just sat in the bank are going to get absolutely destroyed. I, I don't know. I, I feel like there's so <laughs> much you they can't do log this. in. Yeah, but they if you just log, log out, bro, during that, oh, well, can you not log out either? Or would you? I mean, you could, you could log out, yeah, but then you can't log in until someone's cleared it, or you're just going to get one well, shot. That just like... sounds like a game ender, bro. Just no one logs <laughs> in. It's over. It'd be cool to see, though. It'd be a different, a different way of like doing the breaches. That would um, definitely be fresh. I mean, zombies are just, like, always popular, so, like, waves of monsters coming in, you have to clear out. I don't know, they could even, like, smash down, like, the Varrock walls, and, like, you could get mad XP for repairing it. It could be, like, you get ten times the usual construction XP for, you know, putting a limestone brick on the Varrock, on the Varrock castle wall. Like, who knows? Like, they could do whatever. Um, Manked, in terms of this Deadman mode, I don't know if you're able to say, but, like, in terms of its success how well did it do like compared to other dead man modes and compared to other temporary game modes like leagues and also uh fresh start worlds are you able to speak about that um i don't i don't know kind of how like the exact numbers and stuff for fresh start worlds or how they did or leagues um i know for the previous few dead mans i think it uh, i think it it did really it did really well um i think it did above expectations as well um so that was really good um but for specifics can't remember if it if it did better than the one we had during covid or if it was like just under or so, it was something like that but it, it did really well yeah that's great all right. i didn't see the analytics obviously but i just feeling how many people were on at all times how active the breaches were throughout the whole game and then the finale 
I would say it probably did way better, but I'm not yeah. a I'm not a J mod. It you just know seemed what? like it. Forget the outside metrics, right? What about your own personal like metrics? It's your first big project ever. Like, did you feel like that that was like the, you know when you finished it and then you saw how people were enjoying it? Did you realize like this is the job for me? Like, was that kind of like how you felt? Yeah. Um. So. The entire time I was working on it, I was so excited. Every day I was like, oh my god, I get to work on Dead Man. Let's go! So yeah, I was, <laughs> I was just hyped every, every day. Um, I think overall, uh, yeah, it was like my first proper big project. I, I'm really happy with how it went. Um, took so much from it that I can use in the future as well. Um, I would also love to work on proper you know, PvP updates for the main game, um, as I'm also obviously very passionate about that um i think you Bounty see that Hunter... happening soon like for yourself like in, in terms of future uh you know pvp related updates do you see yourself getting involved or are they letting you get get involved um so i i don't get to choose what i work on i'm kind of just told like hey you're working on this um for this release so they do take input and there is like a roadmap like i kind of know what's happening for like the next two or three years you know um, so I'm I'm super excited for the future. Like I'm unbelievably excited as a player. Um, awesome. But yeah, we we don't get to like dictate. Yeah, I'm gonna work on this. That would be lovely. Uh, we do. To be fair, um, Game Jam. We do actually have that uh, during Game Jam. So Game Jam is this time around was a week and a half, and you could basically work on whatever you wanted. Um, I haven't posted anything anywhere, so you can have a little um, exclusive expose. right here. Yeah, Let's yeah, hear exclusive. It. Uh -huh. Um, I I made multi revs. Um, yes. Yeah, I made multi revs um, somewhere in the wilderness that was only accessible via a specific method. Um, we had. The, 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 I think it, it's going to come out in like a in a blog, but everyone else kind of posted about their project, uh, like Ash with his room pouch thing, which was amazing. Um, I I obviously love PvP, and I I, I just wanted to make multi revs, so that's what I did. Um, and yeah, and yeah, that that's really fun. I think in the future there are some little little things that I want to work on. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I, I don't get to pick what I work on. I, I wish I could, but uh, from what I've seen, from what's coming out, I'm very excited for the future. So with like the game, the game jam, jam idea. So do we, after all the ideas get processed, do we vote and we can let it into the game, or is it sentiment? How does that um, work? No, so basically game jam is kind of you just work on something that you're passionate about. Like maybe you want to see something come into the game. Um, maybe you just have ideas that you want to propose to like the community and internally. Nothing is like guaranteed to come in, but it's basically just a way for um the, the game to have ideas to kind of pick from for future updates. So um if for example the community love it and then in the future we've got like a slot where we're like, yeah, that would fit right there then projects can come from game jam okay. and be put into those slots. So, so it, you're, yes, yeah. yeah. You're manifesting it for us pretty much. Multi revs dream. This is the start <laughs> of the manifestation. The community just has to carry it to where yeah. one day they could fit it in a slot and we finally save the wilderness again. So oh, it's it's also mints livelihood. So yes, <laughs> my literal <laughs> livelihood is at stake, bro. Bring yes. it home. Manx, <laughs> you said that you were told what, what you work on. You're not allowed to choose yourself. So what position would you have to be promoted into to be able to like delegate what people work on? Is that like a JMODs, an upper JMODs responsibility or is that far past that? Uh, I won't say specifics. Um, the person who handles that, I fully trust and they are amazing. Um, so yeah, when I say we don't get to choose what we work on, we're kind of given like a slot of, this is the update we want um do with it what you want if that makes sense so you, you've got a lot of creative um power but you you have kind of a brief of like this is what we're expecting um so it's not like uh let's say i get given like a, a skilling update i can't be like okay i'm going to put it in the wildy because that's probably <laughs> going to be a bad idea right <laughs> but it, but if they say okay we want you to do a pvp update then i've got like free reign i can choose like okay what, what are we lacking in pvp and go from there Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's like a so there's like a staff like that's like what lead dev or something or lead like you know game designer or something like that and and he just I says yeah I won't say yeah, who it is, this but... in the game yeah. 
Oh, yeah, okay. I always say who this, but yeah, like I said earlier, they're amazing. Fully trust their decisions and their right. their their choices. So what awesome. it would be like? Do they just do they just tell you like, okay, uh, we want uh, let's say okay, let's let's use skilling. We want a skilling update, and we want it to be mining. Like, how specific does it go when they like kind of request, um, you know, like for you to work on this update? Do they go all the way down to the nitty gritty? Like, we want an AFK. We want it. Uh, non AFK. We want it 50k an hour. Um, you know that kind of stuff, right? How how specific does it go? I mean, it'll be in like a brief. It was basically so because uh, old school RuneScape are so close to their community, we've got a really good understanding, thanks to the amazing community managers, of what players kind of are looking for. So if they said to us, "Yo, we want a skilling update for mining," we kind of know that like what the community want. So it's likely that in the brief, it will be like, okay, the community want this. Can you work on something to provide for that, you know, request, basically? That's kind of how it works. Um, yeah. That's, that's, that's sick, must man. be That must be kind of hard sometimes because, like, you know, there's always the, um, you know, the high-level people not wanting what your typical, like, casual Redditor wants. But I, I guess that question might apply more to the community managers, but but because you know you you have to design the actual content, like what it looks like, what it feels like, and stuff. Does that does that make it hard for you, like knowing that there is you know this this uh, compromise that you have to make, right, to like not trigger too many people, but like uh, inevitably you trigger people, but like find that nice middle ground. Like this, that's hard, right? Yeah, yeah. You just have to basically make the best possible content that you can and make it appeal to the audience that you've been told to make it appeal to and then see what happens, see what the community think, um, take their feedback. If you get a lot, I mean, if it, I, I only worked on Dead Man so far. So my experience with feedback has been somewhat limited to an extent um, because I haven't had like a lot of people saying, what X, Y, Z is an awful idea, right? Um, but you'd hope with guidance from the community uh, managers that anything you propose shouldn't, you know, annoy too many people. But you, again, there's so many different subsets within our community. Yeah. It's always probably not going to be ideal for everyone. So you just want to make like a good compromise for for everyone and make sure it's it's going to hit that target audience. So... How long would you say that you spend between being given the brief and then delivering on that brief? How long do you you think that you put into that? When you say delivering the brief, are you talking about talking to the community with the ideas that we've got, or...? I mean, I, I guess you could go into, like, what the process exactly is. Like, are we talking you will physically make something in code, or is it more or less you'll come up with a concept for what you're going to do? Yeah, so um, you, we, we don't code anything before pitching it to the community because otherwise you just you end up potentially wasting a bunch of dev time, yeah. right? Um, so, yeah, so what we do is uh, it, it depends um, currently if, if we're working on a project um, and then we've got another project that needs to be started, someone from the team will start the design for that project. Then, then that will go through the community and then the community can give their, you know, um, influence on, on it they, they can give us their feedback and then we can adjust it based on that and if the community say oh no this is absolutely awful then we can you know redesign it because if we, if we do it early enough then you have enough time to be able to do that instead of co taking a few months to code something and then you pitch the community community says no this is awful we don't want this and then you're kind of stuck because you've wasted loads of time right so yeah, yeah. Um, I design first see what the community think then code and I'm guessing you've got like a bunch of other J mods that you can like brainstorm with and stuff. It, like, what what is like an average day for you? Could you run us through like your nine to five, like the meetings, the brainstorming? Like, what what does it look like being a J mod working from home? Yep. Um. So, um, from without giving like specific times and stuff, I don't know if I don't know <laughs> if I can or can't. But what time do you have um, your breakfast, man? We need to know. <laughs> I I have my breakfast before I but before I work, obviously. Otherwise, that would be uh unproductive um but i start i actually start at eight so um jags are really nice they have they give you like somewhat flexible hours mm. um there's there's specific hours you have to work between um but i start at eight so i can finish earlier um so i'll start at eight i'll 
it really depends at what stage we're in. If we're in the design stage, I'll be designing stuff. If we're in the coding stage, I'll have like specific mechanics that I need to be working on. Um, because like a whole project will kind of get divided into different sections and then each dev will be working on a specific uh, section. Um, and, and that's basically how that works. So yeah, so from like eight until um, uh, two hours later, for example, uh, I'll just be doing whatever I need to be doing. It might be coding or, or designing. Then I'll have a meeting with my team to, to and that, that we'll just talk about kind of what we're doing in that day. Uh, do we have anything that's stopping us from doing our work? Uh, so that's that's great because if you've got any problems or anything, you can reach out there. And to be honest, you can reach out at any time. There's so many passionate um, and smart people working at, at old school right now. It's it's amazing. So yeah, you've kind of always got support if you ever need it, which is awesome. Um, and then I'll work from that meeting until lunch. Obviously, there's different meetings uh, on different days, but I won't go into that. Then I have lunch. Um, and then I've got the afternoon and, and I work until five uh, and then I log into my group Ironman and play them all evening. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's hard to say, I guess, what a, a typical day is because there's just different um, like periods uh, on a project. Yeah. Um, you, you'll work closely with the people in your team um, when you're working on stuff. If you ever get stuck or whatever, you can just talk to them. Uh, and then designing is obviously a lot of back and forth internally and then we, we we post it to the community to talk about so that's yeah really cool, it, it, man. It's good i have some more questions though related related to you know the the whole jet being a mystical j mod because I, I i know that like i noticed that a lot of new j mods right like i don't follow them like crazy but it, it's like a trend where a lot of them tend to be like ex players or they're still players right they they veterans they played a lot and they're really passionate for the game and then to get into it right and i feel like there's probably a lot of other people that play the game still that probably wants to you know try to try their hands on being a like a j mod what what was training like right because you mentioned training right so when you get into like the orientation thing well how's that like how long is it uh the process of that and you know yeah like are you able to explain much of it or no um, well, you're going to hate the answer. It depends <laughs> on the person. Yeah, for you, right? As a dev, yeah. uh, developer, like, what, what was well, it like? Well, no, sorry. So, yeah, literally what I mean is it, it can change. Like, someone might be really good at picking it all up and they pick it up instantly and it takes them two weeks. Someone might oh. take six weeks, you know? It, it depends on, on what it is. But it's basically, um, I had, I, I went, I had, a, like, a mentor who was amazing. I won't say who they were, but they were absolutely amazing. Um, and they just go through... Um, different, all the different things that you will need to know, basically. Uh, and you do like mini projects and stuff like that within that, just to practice and, and learn. Um, so yeah, without going into too too many specifics, because I don't know what I can and can't say. Um, yeah, yeah you, you get a mentor, work with them, and that's it. Yeah, but like, it, it, it can last several weeks, you said. It can last yeah, like a yeah. range of several weeks. Okay? Yeah. And also like for the demo mode project, like what was like the timeline like, right? Because it, it was a I I, I kind of just am curious what seasonal projects take. What what does it take, right? How much time and resources does it take? Yeah. Um, Timeline-wise, I guess. Uh, it, it Again, it depends on the project because um, everything is tailored um, to, like, a specific project. So it's not necessarily, okay, we've got Dead Man. You have X amount of months. It's, um, you we want a Dead Man here. You have... You have, wait, did I say that wrong? You have, you basically get given like a time limit and then you kind of need to design within that because those are your restraints, right? You can't have, I can't have like a year to work to make the best ever dead man because we need to put out content and otherwise that would just delay content. It'd be awful. It wouldn't work. So yeah, we, we kind of get told this is your deadline um, and, and that's like a restraint we need to work with. So you're saying it was less than a year. <laughs> yeah. Them, at least. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, like, Matt's been yeah. preparing for years for that moment. Oh, yeah. Dude. <laughs> yeah, true. Individually, he's been preparing for years. Yes. <laughs> you already now now that we're back out. on Dead Man mode, though, um, well, obviously one of the best Dead Man modes I've ever played. But for the finale, I am a sucker for 1v1s. Is that a lost cause, or will we be bringing that back possibly in the future? Um, so that is one thing that's just kind of completely out of my hands. Mm. Um, it kind of just 
Um, it just doesn't work. Um, in the past, you know, the last few events, they've just always been overrun with issues. Um, and it's just not great. So that's why this Dead Man, we kind of wanted to take it in just a more fun a- approach. The 1v1s are amazing. And I think in the blog that was posted regarding Dead Man, it was like, maybe we can take 1v1s elsewhere, you know, like have a separate format for that. I'd love that, but uh, I-, I have no idea kind of um, where we'd go with that. Uh, but for Dead Man, I think focusing yeah. it more on just being fun is is better. And we yeah. we saw that we had a lot less issues. Oh, would you say you lean towards 1v1s content-wise, though? Like, would you like to see that back in demo mode or in its own way where we got the 1v1, 5v5, 20v20, amazing tournament? I'd love to see that back. Both. I, I <laughs> love, I just love tournaments, obviously. Yeah. Um. I, stuff like, yeah, the, the 1v1 Dead Man tournament, they were just amazing. It was hype. You could watch so many different streamers because so many yeah. different streamers are so good now. Um, so they all have like a really good chance at winning. It's amazing. And then you just mentioned the 1v1, 5v5, 20v20. Those are amazing as well. So I'd love to see stuff like that too. Um, I remember like Wilderness Wars, that was awesome in the past. Um, yeah, there, there's so many things that I'd love to see. Um, but obviously I, I, I don't like choose. Uh, I can't say, yeah, we're going to do this. Yeah. But they're, they're awesome. I, I just wanted your opinion. Yeah. Sorry, this Rixie, this whole it. conversation just unlocked a memory. So. I can't remember when it was. It was a few years ago. I got asked to go to Jagex and commentate one of the last Dead Mode tournaments with the 1v1s. It may have been one of the last ones. It wasn't the one with um, all of the Lagex stuff with Odoblock. It was, I think, the one before that. But I'll never forget, I was sat there with, with Ian Pure Spam, and he was really nervous, and I was nervous as well, but he was nervous to the point where he, he got up midway through the broadcast and was like, I need to go to the toilet. Like, he was just in a bad way. And I was just there on my own, just commentating this fight. And it was awesome. It was this 1v1 and it was epic. And it was so fun to commentate. And then he came and sat back down and I was like, yeah, man, like he just won. And he was like, what was the guy's name? I was like, I've got no idea. It was like a bunch of <laughs> yeah, random letters job, and numbers. Bro. I was like, dude, I don't know. It was just random numbers and letters. But yeah, I, uh, I love the 1v1s. They were, they were really fun. Yeah, it's honest. it's a shame that there's problems with the one v ones because just looking at Deadman mode, it's supposed to be something fun, something great, but also great publicity for RuneScape, just like leagues is. I swear those one v ones were where the viewers would just pour in. They'd watch for hours. They'd wait till that finale. It seems like it's almost a win win if you can host finales in that way. Hmm. Sadly, there are problems. Well, what I Lots will say, problems. and I wonder, you can tell us how much of a input you had in this. A lot of people, there there was people that were against him for it with the prize pool on this demo mode because it was Mm -hmm. very much, instead of it just, you know, 20 odd thousand dollars going to one person, it was split into like the biggest prize you could get was like a thousand dollars or something along those lines. People obviously were on one side and they were like, you know, what is this participation scape? And then the other people like myself, I was like, (laughs) this is actually, this is actually incredibly smart because it decentivizes people. To be a holes. It's like you're not gonna get so many people DDoSing. You know, it's like people aren't gonna be doing all of this really shady stuff. And um, would you say from the outcome that was the case? Yeah, I mean, I we didn't see any issues. It was a great tournament. Um, that is one of the reasons why I suggested having that kind of prize pooling for it. It was um, you. And okay, I liked that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because. If if we want it to be more focused on on a fun ending, then you know making one person win twenty k or whatever, it just it 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 incentivizes people to be bad. So if you make it a limited win, then everyone's not going in it thinking this. I'm gonna try and win this life changing money by any means possible. It, yep. it just turns into I'm gonna participate in the finale and see what happens. And it's the same the the participation um, prize pools. I, I I understand where people are coming from, but again, I just wanted it as a like a incentive for people just to to play Dead Man properly, see where they can get to, and some random people will get a thousand dollars, which is amazing, right? So yeah, it was just a nice way to incentivize people to play, give give people who would never typically have a chance to win any prize pools from a, like an old school tournament to have a chance to win. Um, and I'm sure we've seen lots of people who never in a million years thought they would win actually win some money, which is awesome. 
Yeah. Can, can we have some more obscene uh, ways to win money to like secretive? Like, say you have that list, which I love, but then you got like a hidden one, like first one to die in the finale, 500 bucks, you know, <laughs> or first one to get dumpstered by a boss in the breach, or I don't know, just. It's just funny the way you can spread money out amongst people and they just it makes your day just playing a game mode. I, I love the way the prize pool was said this time. Yeah, no, we could definitely Has like, there, mix up. Question about 1v1s. Has there ever been 1v1s where there wasn't that much prize money? I don't think so. Because like I'm thinking what the relationship is, right? Like how likely is it for people to, to try to sabotage like the servers and stuff? If there was no crazy prize pool, right? If it's not like 20 grand or whatever, if it's I like, feel like, and I, I know it's not, worth it? I feel like they would still do something just because they could, yeah. right? I don't think it's crazy. Like, I don't think it requires a crazy amount to DDoS some of these servers. It oh, might, but I, I feel like they have. I'm just saying, well, tools. have we figured out the correlation yet? You know, has there been an attempt on a 1v1 where the, the prize pools aren't that heavy, right? I think during the pandemic, there was, uh, it was like a, I think it was a charity one where the money went to a charity, I think, or something, or, or like the people who won, won a computer or something like that. Um, so it wasn't like a, a crazy big prize pool. Um, I don't remember if, if there were any issues during that, but um, yeah, yeah, I remember that being a lower prize pool one. Okay. Cause I, I feel like what was the issue of one V ones? Well, I mean, other than it being too long, sometimes it's like the DDoSing, right? That occurred. So yeah, th there's a way think, to get rid of that. Yeah. 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 I think just various issues. Um, yeah. So okay, the finale finales, even, even though it was multi, I had an idea cause I read it really fast. I was reading the blog. So I made a horrible mistake. I maxed out in the 90 bracket for the finale. So I was a bit surprised, but obviously I read it wrong. Would there be, because I do assume if there's a dead man mode, brackets will be back. They're just perfect. Could we have bracketed finales where it's like a one through 50, just got them all just fire striking each other, something like that? Yeah, that, that's that's one of my potential ideas for, for future finales. Um, that, yeah, like we could have, I don't know whether it would work or not, but we could have staggered finales. So the, the three to 50 bracket starts at 6 p.m., and then 45 minutes later, the 51 to 70 bracket starts. So everyone could have an account in each bracket and it'd oh, be yeah. completely different because obviously each bracket, you're going to have different stats, different gear. Uh, you're going to interact with breach monsters differently. It, it'd be very different and probably quite fun. And it would um, spread but, that finale out too, which people yeah. would love to watch more. But but then you run into the potential issues or uh, of are people now going to specifically target each world when they're occurring, you know? Uh, that was the nice thing about having five finales happen at the same time, essentially, because it's just less likely for anyone to 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 target um, that kind of stuff. Is, so, is there no way yeah. around having to be targeted? Like, is that just always going to be a thing for RuneScape to always be targeted with this potential DDoS? I think it's like just all all games these days have that issue. Like I play Apex a lot and those lobbies get DDoSed all the time. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the companies are, are worth billions of, of dollars and they still we still so all have defend. these issues. Yeah, Damn. exactly. Oh, the only way is LAN, huh? You know? Yeah. Oh hey, dude, Starlink might make the whole world a LAN party. So there is a, there is hope in the future, man. And then we can bring back uh, those 1v1 finales, dude. Uh, my last yeah. thing on Deadman Mode, the breaches. I don't know if Ayiza teased this. I don't think it's probably going to happen, but they said, would you like to see breaches in normal, uh, the normal game mode? What Did he say that? Wait, there? did he really? He might have teased it. I yeah. just want to say was maybe because I wasn't too no sure. Way he was serious, bro. <laughs> I don't think he was serious, yeah, yeah, yeah. but April I Fools, think they baby. wanted to see the sentiment. If, yeah. if there's good sentiment, they, they might get a little more serious, but... Uh, I mean, is there the, any truth it's, to that? It's or, a world boss, right? basically. It's, and people yeah. have been asking for that, like a global world boss for years. So, yeah, yeah that, that's um, a good question. Yeah. It's a good question. I don't know the answer. Um, oh, it, it's just one of those things where we see if the community want it um, and then we see what slash when we can provide it. Um, obviously, I think... Low on the for, list. <laughs> yeah, on the list. But for Dead Man, it... it it did quite well, so it could be just a good foundation to only have it during that. Would it become stale if it was in the main game? What the biggest, exactly. I think, 
I, I did consider this uh, as well, like pitching it for for like a game jam as well. Um, the issue with the the main game compared to Dead Man is the economy, right? We can't. We have to be very careful when it comes to the economy in old school because it doesn't just affect you know people who um, solely enjoy Dead Man and enjoy PvP and enjoy playing on that server. We have to consider so many more things for the for the actual uh, old school escape. So many different skilling supplies and all of that, which is really difficult. Um, yeah. So giving like a, a a good reward for participating in breaches could be really difficult. Um, but I, I would love to see something like that because bre- when breaches were happening, it's it's seven pm or eight pm, and you're just sat at the G, and there's just hundreds of people geared, but, and you're just like, oh my yeah. god, this is amazing. It is. It, it was. It was amazing. Do you know, it's Hello, really interesting dude. actually because I feel like there's been almost a bit of a shift in like the way the community have kind of been playing recently with uh, the crash stars being you know afk and everybody's losing their mind about it it's like forestry is like a community way of training a skill i admittedly have never done it but like i, yes, I would feel I like it's true if they were to add world bosses like it uh, the way things are going and like the sentiment from the players right now i think people would probably really like that just having something as a group like a, a world almost an entire world going towards one location to do that activity and also in regards to world bosses like i don't know how much you play other mmos manx but in the ones that i've played a lot of the time i'll use guild wars 2 for an example they have multiple world bosses and there'll be a cooldown on those bosses. In some cases, it could be like a week or two before it respawns. And then everybody's getting ready, like the hour before it's about to spawn. And then they just go there and they just kill it. And let's say, for example, there's like a there's like an armor set it drops. And there's like a small chance it'll drop one piece to like the thousand people that turn up. Like that would be such hype content for, for old school RuneScape. And those items would be crazy. Yeah, no, I, I could definitely see something like that. Can I input on the, on that uh, on that sure. uh, you know remark about the world bosses? I think there's a chance in the distant future we might might get it, but I think if Crash Stars didn't already um, you know pr- prove to you that there's some issues right with like how bad the world that, like connections are, if that many people drop in all at once, I think that's something that'll probably be the main thing that holds it back, right? Oh. From, because Bro. if you make a world boss that drops like you know some of the best items, the problem is the moment you know it happens, that world is going down. Do do do. So I don't know how realistic this is, and I, I really don't. Saying, this so. is a question for you, Manx, and you could potentially forward this on to Mod Ash if you want to humor me. But although what, what is crazy. the potential of having servers like specifically for the world bosses that can hold up to like? 10,000 players like 20,000 player time, worlds imagine they would have to, they would have <laughs> to. But at the same time Rixie, do you really need 2,000 people doing a world boss right could is 50 people 100 people not enough to feel like holy shit this is a crowd you know you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying it's like maybe I'm there's happy. a middle ground maybe you could like set it so that if you're the first 100 200 to show up that's it you know you, you they're too late. Do or you something. know how that world would still go down? Because everyone yeah. would just be flooding the pathways, well, bro. No, 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 no. But what I mean is, like, maybe a way to queue from any world, right? So that way you're not, like, forcing your everybody to log into one world. Rather, you... Because right now, I feel like old school is sorely missing some sort of, like, some sort of Community engine event? feature that lets oh. you queue into things. Because right now, what, what effectively happens is, right, if something happens, everyone is forced to go into one world where whereas maybe if you guys you know made some sort of queuing system anytime you make events that that involves hundreds of hundreds of players you wouldn't really crash the world as bad because then you know people don't always have to like just instantly drop into one world maybe, maybe like some sort of queue system and and like it just like limits you before people even log into that world if that makes sense something like that I think that system would, would prove to be very useful for many different things. You know? It doesn't have to be a world boss idea. It could be just any community-driven idea. right? Because I feel like that's just a common problem anytime. Even like if a JMod's like, hey guys, go to this world, right? Like that's The, the, the lag involved with that is already crazy. So maybe, maybe. Is there a, an actual restriction that you can think of off the top of your head, Manx, where, why they couldn't create worlds that have more players? 
Like, could they do a 5,000 person world? Um, my response will be, have you been to World 330? I have, yeah. Where there's 2,000 people and it's super laggy. It's dog shit. <laughs> it's I, I, get, I, get, I, I, I do get that. I understand that. But like, <laughs> I'm thinking like, oh, bro. Well, like, if that's how, the case, why do we even have 2,000 players in a world? If, if the yeah. servers genuinely can't hold 2,000 players, why does it even exist? Why don't we just cut right. it down to 1,000? Do you, do you like know what idea, I mean? to, to be it's fair, I don't think you could because these days, like on a Sunday, I looked the other day and I was scrolling down the world list and it, like every world had like a thousand people. Yeah, it was crazy. Exactly. Yeah. It was already at a thousand for each world. It was. I, it was I think insane. the real question is just what, like, what is the technological like hurdle of making the the server like latency with that many people? like alleviated like what what is the cost in that how much money would you need to like yeah because i know other games that have like <laughs> five to ten thousand people all playing on one world and then they're going to try to break that down to like fifty thousand people or something where that's just a whole game it's just one world people are just there no lag how the hell do they do it <laughs> exactly yeah. what the hell are they doing bro what, what games though i think we need some examples i mean like there's like a Eve online one game. server and that's sure like online. ten thousand people on yeah there's plenty, actually. I don't, I don't know the names, bro. It's like, it's like, that, it's like you know? a universe. Yeah. I, I don't know. Mag, I don't yeah. know if you're the person who asked this too, man. This is yeah, probably not, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, you'd, you'd have to ask someone from like Engine. But I think for your point earlier, Rice Cup, uh, yeah. uh, the PvP arena has a system like that where you can queue oh. from any world and you get sent to a specific world, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm so surprised yeah. that you guys aren't taking advantage of that more because, oh, well, for future updates, because I feel like if you're gonna do like ambitious you know, multi, like, you know, player deals, right? I, I think you, you have to get it. Manked. Or else, yeah. Listen. Anyways. I'm, ju I'm just going to touch on this, like, super briefly, because you brought it up. The uh, PvP Arena Worlds. I don't know if you've been there anytime soon, or recently. I went there recently, <laughs> and I just, I just want to say yeah. this, right? Because I had a two-minute rant in my most recent video that I just completely <laughs> cut from it, because I was like, I can't even be fucked to go into this. But, like, there's a massive problem there. Mm. Firstly, I don't care about boosters. Literally don't care. People can boost services, whatever. But in those worlds, with the PvP arena, there is no penalty to players for not showing up to their fights. And effectively, what happens is there's loads of people there that are selling in Bue scroll boost services to players like Iron Man or whatever, and you will match with them, and they will literally come in and be like, are you paying? And you'll be like, no, I just want to fight, bro. And then they just leave, and they just hold you hostage. Like, it is... I'm not going to moan too much about it, but like, seriously, oh, a very simple way of fixing that, like one thing that could just help with that tremendously is just give a penalty for players that either don't show up to the fights or players that leave. Like, if they just implement a yeah. time-gated penalty for that, that mini game would be infinitely better. Like, like that. But again, I don't know how easy that would be to do, but oh my god, that place tilts me, man. It drives yeah, me I, mad. Yeah. I, mm, I went yeah. there and it was, yeah, it... I th it's such a cool it's such a shame because it is such a cool system like it's perfect for hosting like a tournament it, the it spectating is. and all, is really good um but it's like yeah beta right now it feels like a beta thing yeah. where it, the concept you could, could go wild you know you can go crazy with it like a lot it, of potential it, it, it's just a case of there's just like very small things that you could implement that would really help it you know and i'm talking like quite small things but then I also don't know how to code like a time ban on somebody for not joining a game. That might take years. I don't know. Like I have no idea how to code. So, but well, just, just... we've got it in Bounty Hunter. So, if yeah, you skip yeah. too many targets and stuff, you can't go in for you can't get a target for another thirty minutes or something. So, yeah, it it, it should be possible. I'm not sure. I'm I haven't looked at PvP Arena code at all. I think it was implemented before I started. And yeah, um, we definitely have to have a look at it. Um. But yeah, if, if anything, if anything, I feel like all the PvP mini games, I just need a way to be introduced to players in a way that's just smoother, you know. Because right now it's like, who the hell knows what PvP arena is, right? Like it, it just seems like only select people know, and like most players never probably even know it exists for the most part. It's like there's like a lot of these random PvP stuff. It's just like how do you? Get the general population to even know yeah. what's there I, and I, what is like the general order of difficulty that you should try. Right? I feel like there's no system for that, so 
I feel, and then the PvP in Vina just seems like because there's no system, no one really knows, and they're the priority. Therefore, the priority is very low to do anything for that content. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I I think PvP arena is even if it even if it worked perfectly, it would still be for a very specific tier of player, which would be very high. Whereas something like LMS is is very easy, like entry level, and then multi PKing that's like easy entry level. I think. Oh yeah. Mm. Personally, think the best way to get people into PKing is to to get them to go PK with friends mm -hmm. because multi PKing is so easy. You can just bring range or whatever if you want, and you that's can still you get kills. And, and and yeah, that's why like the the wieldy bosses should be better. The multi bosses should be better loot because they should be more worthwhile for the people wanting to go there and then it just increases activity and like I, so um a few months or like a month after the building bosses came out we went on a jmod trip and there was a there was a couple of uh, jmods that uh, we went pk and it, it was it was great fun and a lot of them <laughs> hadn't gone pk before and it was just super fun and i yeah i just i kind of wish um uh mul the wieldy multi bosses were better uh loot that the mechanics are amazing there's so many like the videos of people were uh, solo anti pking at venonatis uh, because they've got uh, they, they know how the mechanics work and they can get hit by a team of five people and then just anti them it's it's amazing to see so mechanics for the wieldy bosses 10 out of 10 but the loot is just not quite there and i think that typically happens for pvp because we're super hesitant to make it really good because you know it, it's kind of easily abusable to an extent so it, it's difficult, but definitely need to. I've seen this a lot from the community, and obviously as a player, I know it as well. Going, looking back at content and revisiting it, and and saying it did it hit the mark? Did it hit what we wanted it to hit? No. Okay, let's change it. Whereas right now we don't get to the let's change it as as soon as we probably should be. I think now, that's why you want to do multi revs, right? Uh, we we at, only at, have on a couple more minutes, sadly. Uh, and I really want to know, Minked, how excited are you for leagues coming up? Um, I'm literally subscribing to so many new people on YouTube right now because all of them are making leagues full videos. I got and a I'm crazy just build interested. idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, um, well, I don't know. I feel yeah. like it might be a popular one, to be honest now. Oh, they think about it. But... Yeah, it's been amazing. Make it go. Um, nice. I, I'm so, I'm literally. If you make leagues full videos, at me on Twitter, and I'll I'll, I'll subscribe oh. to you on YouTube. It's it's so exciting. It's it's so different. It's so casual friendly. It's just enjoyable. Um, I'm super excited. Yeah. What what are your regions, bro? Because obviously you're playing. So what are you unlocking first? Give us the process. Um, so I've not got like a full plan. I'm just going to wing it. Like for Dead Man, I've got a full plan because that's like more time limited to an extent. Whereas this is, you got two months. Oh, yeah, so you've yeah. got ages. You, you can mess up a million, not a million times, but you can mess up a lot and still be fine, right? Uh, I'm going to go for Dragon Rank uh, because I felt like it. I like the static um, level of points. It's really cool. Um, so I'm going for Wilderness, Asgarnia, and Fremenic, I think. Uh, and the, the, so the reason is I, I, I'm not a huge raider um, I'm currently playing my solo group Iron Man accounts again so I'm going to save raiding content for those when I get to that um, so I just want to do solo stuff I want to go to the wildy just to mess around as Garnia has God Wars I've always enjoyed God Wars uh, and Fremenic uh, has like DKs and stuff which and Vorkath um, yeah. and I think that will go quite nicely with my build I think so it would just be like rage a super build, huh? chill. No, I'm not gonna no, go rage no. build. Melee? I'm gonna go Is melee, melee build, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With those, yeah. with those leaks. Oh my! Obviously, I know more um, than, oh, than yeah? the leaks so far. Yeah, uh, because we get to play test it and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So we get to like check is this is X Y Z broken. So it's really fun. But I'm just the leaks are amazing i love hearing what people yes. say i've i've changed my mind like nine times hearing what people like content creators are saying about what to pick and stuff uh, it, it's so exciting it's, it's really good your build is my build Cause I'll, cause except I'll for asgardia dude i am going wilderness Kandarin, fremenic melee i can't believe you're like I, one I will, region off my build I, I don't know if you know this but if you pick our Scarnia and you do range build right the crossbow in leaks four is actually roided as hell because it's two takes and you get dragon bolts and 
effectively you're you're shooting like a, a f bow right like a fardenim bow except you're hitting like 50 in two takes wait when you crossbow like, did it mean the yeah crossbow any crossbow like uh like a oh, armado crossbow, crossbow. Oh, I so crossbow. like you can eat yeah if yeah. you get like an easy armado crossbow it becomes a blowpipe speed crossbow that hits like 50s on dragon bolt and that's, that's pretty nuts. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's kind of like pretty busted. And you get the you get the spoke <gasps> spec right more yeah, often. Yeah, yeah, that's too. So you do. Uh, that's not even talking about that. Just I'm talking about the raw damage. You hit like fifty. Oh yeah, but if you're like hitting 60s. those specs right. too, yeah, yeah, that's oh, yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How many hours a day are you guys planning on playing for? I'm starting it off with a subathon, so I might be I'm going, going hard. I'm going straight. hard. I'm probably gonna play like at least ten hours. Ten, ten hours uh, a day. I'm at least scared of going to be restricted on this one, but how long do you reckon you'll play, mate? I've booked a week off to just oh, play League. Um, so hey. probably like twelve hours every day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. At least ten. I feel like I might go. For, you know, I'm scared like, of Rice, dude. Eight, this three, man, yeah, all he yeah. does is PVM, bro. Like he sees the world <laughs> yeah, differently yeah. in a way. It just he well, deconstructs like, it. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna go for giant rank, right? I'm gonna go for giant rank, and like I'm gonna. Try to complete my build. Those are my two goals: complete my build and go for dry, and get dry and rank. And then I'll, I'm happy with that. So, but Tom, I'll go you, hard. Are you going Kandarin yeah. or Desert? Because I know they both have a silk stall. So which one are you leaning towards? <laughs> well, Desert, obviously, because then I can do raids free. But yeah, I. Do you know what? I have been so busy. I've not really had a chance to really think about what I want to do for it. There, I, I'm torn. There's there's two parts of me, and I'll be totally honest. So. I don't have a problem with making an account on the regular XP rates and having fun that way. I feel like leagues for a lot of people is like, you know, it's almost like a private server. It's like you're playing at crazy XP, crazy drop rates. And for me, I've never liked the fact that at the end of it, you don't get to keep the items in the account. That for me is quite important. So I'm going to try to go into this with a mindset that's like, Firstly, I'm not going to watch anybody's content. I don't, I don't want to watch anyone's content on it. I want to just have my own experience tailored to how I would play the game and kind of see if I can capture that magic, you know? Because, like, there's so many of you that enjoy leagues. You guys can't all be wrong. And it's like, I don't get it. And it's like, I want to go into this and I just want to experience it on my own terms and just really try to enjoy it for what it is. I am going to set some goals and I will definitely look at like what I need to unlock and stuff like that. But right now I just, I haven't had the time to do the research. Tom, why do you need to keep items, dude? You make bills every week. What do you, what you want more <laughs> items, dude? More account? What do you do with an extra account, bro? You, dude, you should I'm be glad it gets bro, deleted. I'm, I'm a collector, man. I like to keep stuff. Dude. Like, what's All the right, point well, in having I a two looking shadow when need your more account money. if it just disappears? Like, I don't get it, bro. Like, you th don't this need it, bro. There's nothing else you can buy. I you and Rice it, Cup dude. and your 20 bill banks, dude. Yeah. You're fired. Oh, dude. You're but fired, like, bro. obviously, you know, we we gotta we're creators, so uh, a big part of like what makes, uh, you know, what I mean, like we're not gonna lie about it. The big part of what makes leaks fun too is also kind of like how well our videos will do, right? But luckily, I feel like in leaks four, you have so many different builds that you can go. Yeah. That we don't really have to make the same content, even though it's literally the same leak. Yeah. Right. So it, this one should be very easy, like less stressful like get into it as a creator because then you, you probably will make something but unique so yeah, yeah. All no one's gonna make like is that i do yeah. really unlike leaks three i feel like leaks three everybody made the same thing because I, one guy figures out everything and then everyone just follows him so that yeah. one i felt like was like no go right like especially for for creators that's it dude i just want to enjoy it i want to see what the magic's all about you guys love it and like everybody else does so it's like i'm clearly missing something here and I'm going to do my absolute best to go into it with open mind and just try to love it for what it is. But it's always going to be in the back of my head. I'm going to be like, if I grind for like a twisted bow or something, it's gone. Like it just disappears. It's like, what do you need another one, bro? You got five. You're good. Oh, I don't know. I struggle, man. I struggle to wrap my head around the concept. It just, yeah. I, and what, you get like know, a little man. dragon trophy if you get the top Dude. 100. I don't even I don't know, know why I love League so much, bro. Because I don't want to play Iron Man. I don't want to play Hardcore. I, just, I don't want to challenge yeah, myself in any way except 
on leagues. I want to go as hard as I can. I don't know why. I know why most people love leagues. It's because they don't want to play the real game at the regular XP rates. I don't mind (laughs) doing that. Like, I'm happy doing that all day, dude. I'll I'll take shrimps for, like, you know, the first hour to get my fish into level 20. Like, that's fine. But, like, I don't know. Everyone just needs that fast XP. That I don't know, you play Fresh Start and it worked, right? Yeah, but, so, yeah, but Fresh yeah. Start was yeah. awesome and it was also just regular XP as well. It was completely the same as the name, the uh, normal game. It was the exact same. I think the, the one big appeal for it is the task system, though. Because mm-hmm. yeah. RuneScape is all built about if you have a goal, you're going to have the most fun on RuneScape. If you yeah. don't have a goal, yep. you're going to log in, bank stand, log out. So because Leagues is so well created, you, you have, like essentially unlimited goals right and that's why people enjoy it so much that's what i think at least anyway yeah yeah i agree Agreed. i agree dopamine. instant you dopamine. Get a lot of it mm-hmm. instant you just see a little thing you feel like you're doing something you're not really but it does feel like you're doing a lot of things you know you feel like you're Listen, accomplishing I, quite a lot i know i know it all sounds negative on my end but i am actually looking forward to it i'm just yeah inventing like my concerns through. with how i feel internally because i'm like this it's is called how greed bro but I don't just want, want this to be my experience. Like, I think I'm going to enjoy it. And I think that my enjoyment of it will depend on the goals that I set and how much I, like, get it down to a T. You know? Mm-hmm. If I set myself a goal hey, and I'm hey, just, hey, like, really, hey. like, anal about all the details, <laughs> it's going to be sick. Yeah. Sorry, man. Oh, I have you, you didn't understand question. that word in any other context than the one that you know. Uh, excuse me. All right. Chat. I saw your face. People dude. watching. <laughs> <laughs> Who does better leagues? Me versus Rake Seat, comment down below. Don't add Rice Cup. It's not okay. fair. All right. This uh, man. Yeah, yeah. Me versus oh, Rake Seat, who does better? Vote down below. Rice Cup will give everyone who answers correctly a T vote oh. later on. So oh, I don't have <laughs> He's got a couple. He's got a couple. I, I do have one question, but also it's it not real. It's like half question, half just. I kind of want to put it out there. Is that like uh, Leaks 3, right? I feel like it was so fundamentally different from the other leaks because. Even though Leagues Three, when you guys proposed it, well, you got you weren't you weren't there at the time, right? At the, at the office, like working. But like when when they pitched Leagues Three initially, it really sounded like you have all these possibilities, but you you should you you have to make your own build. But that was so wrong when it came out because after like a week, they just nerfed the the cost of uh, unlocking the relics. So effectively. A lot of the, you know, the more uh, consistent players, they just ended up unlocking everything, right? And then it just completely destroyed this whole thing where, like, your choices matter. Because it really didn't matter that much, right? You were not locked in whatsoever. I, I feel like I feel like that I, I feel like that definitely helps. Uh, I mean, uh, it's more interesting for certain players. Like, they want to experience everything. I know some players don't like restrictive stuff. But at the end of the day, I feel like leaks fundamentally what makes it really fun is your choices and how it like locks you in right you, you sacrifice a little bit of something it could be a combat style so that you gain insane power on another style right like least four for example that's how it'd be right you if you pick mage you're gonna suck at melee and wrench but it's okay your mage is gonna be disgustingly overpowered that's a trade-off right i think that's the magic but also for these players though what about for the players that always just want to unlock everything right have you guys ever thought about like maybe uh, like like after the initial duration of leagues is over, maybe you'll like like extend it an extra week or two, where there's no points to be gained, but you unlock everything. Uh, like, have you guys what? ever thought of something like that? <laughs> who's who's gonna be playing that? It's like extra sweaty players right there going. No, no, the there's league. no points. There's no points to be gained. I know, just so people can enjoy the full spectrum of the game. Yeah, because is that what you think said? about this way, right? I. I always, like, I, I shit talk. I kind of shit talk Leagues 3 because I always say like, you know, it was fun, but I only played for a month because I couldn't really be creative, right? I, I just follow what one guy figured out and then that was it. But but then there were a lot of people that are like, oh, I love that because I just, I could I could do everything, you know? And I, and I totally can see, I can, you know, sympathize with that. But I feel like, well, I feel like if, if we do that all the time, then, then Leagues is just, it's just not as fun, right? But but what about for the people that do want that? Maybe, right, like adding that extra week or two where everybody can unlock everything by the end of any league, right? It's just like a, a thing that just happens where those people can just have at it and just do whatever they want. And I don't think they'll have much to complain about, right? Because then you can just focus on like every league in the future, just having some sort of, you know, different routes, different builds, 
And then for the people that don't like that, they can enjoy everything at the end, right? And no, no competitive advantage, just for fun. Have you guys ever thought about something like that? Well, I was... so I didn't actually play the, the third leagues because that was when I was learning to code and I was like, I don't right. want to get distracted. So I, I completely ignored it. Um, I think for me, at least, my thought process behind it would be if you unlock it all, it kind of, it removes like the special feeling of it, I exactly. guess. If you get, exactly. right. yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I'd be against it, to be honest. I, I'd much prefer you, you kind of, you make your choices and you see what happens. And if you don't like your choices, make a new, do account. A new account. More membership. Yeah. More. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's what I mean about Leagues 3, because that's literally what yeah. Leagues 3 was. I'm just yeah. saying like, uh, you know, like you can add like an extra week where everybody can log everything, but there's no points to be gained, right? So there's no competition. It's just like leagues really already ended, but it's just for those people that like love to experience everything because that's how they, that's how they enjoy leagues. Cause there is a, a, a good amount of league enjoyers that enjoy leagues like that, right? <laughs> they do get a lot out of that, but it's just like, give them that week. Cause I, I'm not going to do it. I don't care about that. I like restrictions. But I, I do sympathize for those people, right? Didn't Min get so, 200 mil in the saying. last one in like magic or something? Yeah, rank yeah. one, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm. Uh, so my 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 uh, question or suggestion is like, do you guys think that adding an extra week to any league in the future where everything's just unlocked for you for people to just mm -hmm. play with is good? I. But, but there's no like, point. There's no points to be. Gained, I get, I right? get it, but at the same time, you know, they got to open the server for a week. That doesn't seem super beneficial. Plus, if the people who haven't played enough leagues, they can go and watch all the content, or go make another account and play it alongside. It's like there's so many ways to get that content that they're missing in a really good way. Well, that for, no, but seem for them to play it though, right? Because they yeah, want to play it. Yeah. But they could do another account on the side and play the other stuff. I get what you're saying. But yeah, like. The, the reason why... makes you want it more. It's like yeah. having a pen pal, you know? If you hang yeah, on yeah, them every yeah, day, yeah. you don't want to write them, but every once in a yeah, while, no, that's you what just I'm saying. No, what, what I'm saying is that's how we should play, and that's that's how it's going to be. I'm just saying you get an extra week where no, it's different no, for I those get it. other people, right? That's my opinion. And the reason why <laughs> I say that is because that way, those guys can't complain about the real leagues. You know what I'm saying? Like, so when I've never like, every complaints. league in the future is always... There's some restrictions, right? Because I believe that leagues should have restrictions, right? But like, I don't want to say "fuck you guys" if you want to play everything, right? I don't want to say that. I want to, you I'll know, I, I want them to have something. Is, is what I'm saying because I'm not petty like that, right? But but I'm not JMO. I'm not a JMO. I'm not Jagex. That's why I'm asking, yeah. you know, someone that is on their opinion yeah. of it. But but if you um, guys no, don't like it, I understand, right? No, I'm just I, looking out for the small guys. I, I get you, um, because yeah. it was like. Um... I can't, I can't remember who hosted it. Was it Solo Mission? Hosted like a tournament at the end of League 2? Oh, yeah, yeah. In the fight pits. And, yeah. yeah, in oh, the fight yeah, pits. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that oh. was super fun. And yeah, if, if we if we had like every hour unlocked so you could do whatever content with whatever build you'd made, it, it, it could be cool. And I, I completely understand because obviously certain restrictions for certain areas mean you, you can't do other pieces of content with what you've unlocked. So it'd be really cool to be able to do that. Um, I I don't work on leagues or have anything to do with leagues, so I wouldn't be the the, the person to kind of raise Ask that it. suggestion to. But Ask it husky. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it's it's a cool suggestion. I don't know how it would work technically with yeah. removing all restrictions on the world. Maybe it would be very easy, like after um, the event, you know, after yeah. the actual duration. You know that yeah. that tournament Solar Mission hosted was so fun because I remember racking up. I had a dragon skimmy and everybody laughed at me. We were in the Discord and all the content creators were like, <laughs> these skimmy. They were there with like their whips and shit. And uh, the best part is, as soon as we got into the tournament, I was just like, right, I'm going to de skimmy this guy. And we one shot him. It was insane. Who, who'd, bro. You get? Yeah. who'd you get? I, I can't remember who it was, but like that de skimmy <laughs> was like MVP, bro. Just sliced their prayers and everyone went, spec, dead. Next person. It was great. Weren't you partnered with Solo? Who was your partner in that? Because it was 2v2s. Oh, no, it was, it was like five v five. Oh yeah, oh, that's I over. I, I did two v I did a two v two and maybe Dude, a you turn one. off prayers for like two seconds. You're five dead. people hit you, you're dead. You're yeah. dead, man. Yeah. Like there was, you know, mm -hmm. these people they didn't have a clue, man. They were just a bunch of content creators, do clueless. These guys didn't PK back in the day. They had no idea. Dude, I got PK by a D skin back in the day, so I know how fucked up it is. <laughs> I was just doing a clue scroll, and then this guy just turned on my prayer, and then. I 
I was teleporting through the lever. <laughs> I was oh, like, what dude. the hell are these guys are Manx, if you could bring back anything, that's, that's what I'd ask you to do, man. Make it so, like, if you teleport, the damage goes through. Or, like, do you remember when you used to teleport at Mage Bank? And if someone specked you on the other side with a DBS, you'd go through and you just die. <laughs> that yeah, that's why best. I wanted to do this game. Again. I love those times. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, Manx, we've had you now past the uh, the time that we agreed on, so I think we'll we'll leave you to it, dude. But thank you very time. much for coming on, man. It's been a pleasure. And uh, is there anything you want to shout out at all? Um, just keep on giving us good feedback for everything uh, that we ever post. Constructive criticism is the best, um, and it really helps out. So that's all I'll shout out. Thank you. To the community, I guess, just for giving us inspiration and ideas yeah, for, for stuff we ask Please don't talk about their moms, okay? Don't talk about uh, uh, Amon's yeah. moms, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Constructive feedback, he said. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>